Hi, I'm Paula Thrasher. I'm a digital transformation executive in the defense and aerospace industry. I've worked for companies like CSC, General Dynamics, and United Technologies. And what I want to talk about today is my experience and five years of running value stream mapping workshops across a number of teams and a number of organizations, and how I think it's a very effective tool in your DevOps transformation. So I wanted this to be very instructional so you walk away and can actually use this tool in your organization. I definitely would like it to be interactive, and since we're virtual and we've got the Slack channel, if you have any questions along the way, definitely hit me up in Slack and I'd be happy to help. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing we need to talk about is what a value stream is. So value stream mapping is a technique and it comes from lean manufacturing that lets you analyze the current state environment in order to improve the future state. It's to me fundamentally a visualization tool and it's intended to be a systems view of your enterprise as is. Now you can also do a future state value stream, but I'm really gonna focus on using the mapping technique to model your current state. A key idea uh, that I want to cover about what a value stream map is, is systems thinking. Now, if you've read the Phoenix Project, you know, obviously, this is one of the three uh, principles of DevOps. And I would say this is, is the concept that you want to start with the customer and very much focus on how you go from concept to ka -ching. And that really is everyone in your organization that delivers into the value stream, whatever role that is, whatever that looks like in your organization. Um, obviously, it's typical to think about development and ops, but don't forget folks like support, test, audit, and so on and so forth. The point is, it needs to be the entire value stream, or not really the point. The next idea that I want to talk about is the purpose, which is to identify and eliminate waste. Now, again, this comes from lean manufacturing, so it thinks about the manufacturing context, things about physical movement, and so on and so forth. But in a software world, Waste takes a little bit of a different form. And I want to give credit here to Mary and Tom Poppendy, who came up with this concept almost two decades ago. But waste in software is things like defects, waiting, building extra features, relearning, having lots of handoffs, task switching, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail about each of these forms of waste, but I will provide some examples in the Slack channel for those of you that have questions about them. The next key idea, and of course, the whole point of the exercise is to implement countermeasures. I mean, obviously, if you're going to identify waste, you need to come up with a way that you're going to actually resolve it. Obviously, automation is a huge technique, but sometimes just lowering work in progress or refactoring something is a solution. We'll talk more about that as we go along, but this is really the whole point, is the purpose of the map is to come up with the things that you're going to implement that are going to make your process go faster and deliver with better quality and better value to your customer. Just to give an example of what this looks like, this was obviously an in-person session, but it's something I did a number of years ago. And like a lot of organizations, it starts with requirements. We met with our customer and thought of some ideas and that took a little bit of time. And of course, we'd done our usual agile transformation and that team had done lots of optimization. But here's the kicker. Everything else that it took to deploy was actually where a lot of the bottlenecks are. So the benefit of actually drawing this visual was the organization was able to visualize that and really have good conversations about things that needed to happen to make this improvement work. Now, just in this example, to give what it looked like when they were done, they went from around 46 days from concept to ka-ching to about 11. And how they did that was coming up with a series of improvements, for example, in this everything else to deploy that was taking four and five days and getting that down to 12 minutes. I can't say this enough, but you fundamentally change how your organization works if you take a process that used to take four days and make it take 12 minutes. It's huge. This is a tremendous accelerator for your DevOps transformation. It's actually, I think, how a lot of organizations get real impact and all those things you want to read about in the State of DevOps report. So with that, if that hasn't convinced you of the value of doing this, let's get into it. So let's run one. If you want to run one, the first thing you need to do is start with a feature. And I talk about the four, <clears throat> the five R's. It needs to be recent. And that is something that you can remember what happened. So probably in the last three months, it should be real. I mean, ideally this is something that actually has business impact to you and not just like a software upgrade. It should have reach. And that is something that really covers the full value stream. And it should be representative. So it should be something that, um, is typical to how you do work and not like a emergency request or something atypical that's not going to really uncover the actual processes and practices going on in your organization. Um, the last piece is really important too. I think it needs to be road tested. It should be something that is in production and ideally you have a lot of telemetry on 
all the places from when you thought of the idea to when you deployed it, and even better, some feedback from the customer about how it was received or how well it worked. Now, the next piece, of course, besides the feature are the people to have this session. And just a few titles you might need to include, the customer if you have them, but uh, that's not always realistic. So at least the business owner, um, certainly the product owner, all the way through to all the people in the organization who are part of delivering this value, all the way through to customer service. Now, just to make sure this is not a huge list because in most organizations, this is an enormous list of people. You did pick a specific feature. So the people you would like involved in your value stream session are the people who worked on that feature and they can talk to how that feature was implemented and how that process actually went. So not every developer, the developer that wrote that feature, not every database engineer, the one that was on call when you put the thing in production, right? So that should help narrow the list. Now it might still be 20, even 30 people. I mean, I hope not, but it could be. And a lot of organizations I work with, that's about the size you start off with. And that's okay. Just understand that it's important that all the roles, especially all the silos are represented because the real value of this session is the conversations you're gonna be creating. As a quick anecdote, if not everybody wants to participate, one tip I usually say is tell them it's a chance to complain. People love to do that. Okay, next, we're gonna place activities on the timeline. So for this example, I've just done a very simple, you know, begins on Monday, ends on Friday. If you know when you started working on the feature to when you deployed it, you can actually put those dates on a real calendar. If you don't have it, you can just sort of do a notional timeline and people sort of figure it out. In one example that I did in a person session, I had people use 